In one hand, Camila carried a huge bag and a couple of full bags, and with the other she tightly held the hand of a boy of about five. The child tightly pressed his thin lips together and frowned, just like a real adult. The boy understood that life with his mom would be completely different now, but he didn't know exactly how different or where they would live. That morning, Camila took her son to the pediatric clinic to have a decayed tooth removed. They went without an appointment, so they were prepared to wait in a huge line. Camila didn't have money for a taxi, and her partner didn't give her any either, so they had to take the bus. Upon reaching the hospital, the reception unexpectedly informed them that the doctor was sick and there would be no appointments today. Mickey was happy about it, but Camila was disappointed. Once again, she would have to take time off to finally deal with her son's toothache. Clark, her partner, offered little help. Although he wasn't working, he wouldn't lift a finger for her or their son. Sitting on the bus, the girl sadly looked out the window at the gloomy, albeit spring, sky and again thought about how Clark turned out to be completely different from the person she imagined six years ago when she had just finished school. Back then, she loved him madly, ignoring the advice of her mother and friends. She ignored her mother because she considered her old and ignorant about love. After all, Camila's father had left almost immediately after her birth, and her mother had no other men in her life. She ignored her friend because she thought she was just jealous. Clark was very handsome and cheerful, played the guitar, and was athletic. His parents were wealthy and bought him everything he desired. Camila was proud that he chose her. The only disappointment was that he didn't want to get married. Even when Camila gave birth, he insisted that their son not be registered under his name, and she remained a single mother. He claimed it was more beneficial, and the state would help. Although they started living together, it was his parents' insistence. They probably hoped that this way, their son would become more mature and independent. They bought him a small house and a car and moved Camila and the baby there. Initially, she was happy, but soon realized there was little good in living with Clark. He refused to continue his education or work, constantly begged money from his parents, and took all of Camila's salary after forcing her to start working as soon as Mickey entered daycare at the age of two. Camila and her son never experienced care or tenderness from Clark. Despite being her once handsome love, he had lost much of his appeal, but she had nowhere else to go. She didn't want to return home because admitting her mother was right would be embarrassing, so she endured it. Clark may have been a lousy husband, but at least he didn't fight, they had a roof over their heads, and some sort of income. That is until the dentist fell ill that day. Upset about missing the appointment, Camila entered the house and initially didn't notice the strange sounds from within. However, Mickey, deftly removing his boots, slipped past her and noisily opened the door to the bedroom. Immediately, he turned to his mother, staring at her with wide, horrified eyes. What did you want, Clark yelled, red with anger, hastily putting on his underwear. Who are you to me? Nobody. I didn't invite you to get married, didn't promise anything. Maybe I'm still searching, looking for the perfect wife and you're just a temporary fling. And Mickey is not my son, look, I'm not even registered as his father, so don't count on any child support. Camila remained silent, not uttering a word when her neighbor, wrapped in a sheet with clothes in hand, hurried past her. She also stayed silent when Clark, unfazed, shouted at Mickey for barging into the bedroom without permission. She didn't respond to her partner's insults either. Camila, as if enchanted, stroked her son's head as he clung to her, shivering from the cold, desperate shudder that couldn't be stopped. When Clark pointed to the door, Camila seemed to snap out of her trance. She rushed to gather her and Mickey's belongings. Where they would go, the girl didn't even think. The main thing was to escape from this wretched house as far as possible. 
When Camila and Mickey reached the bus stop, they sat down to rest. The girl still needed to decide where to go next. Mom, my tooth hurts again, Mickey said guiltily. He understood that it wasn't the time for a toothache, but enduring it was becoming difficult. Camila hugged the boy and took out her phone to search for an affordable private dentist online. Suddenly, a familiar name flashed before her eyes, Ben Brooks. Camila was surprised and couldn't help but smile. Had Ben actually become a dentist? Yes, it turns out he achieved what he wanted, unlike Camila. She also had a dream to become an architect, but she fell in love with Clark and forgot about everything. Ben was Camila's classmate, and he had been infatuated with her since almost the first grade. She liked it until the eighth grade, but then everyone started making fun of her. Ben was small, chubby, not at all like the prince's girls dream of. Camila began to avoid him. He understood and didn't force himself on her, but he never stopped loving her. One day, shortly after graduation, when Camila was already dating Clark, they all hung out together at their classmates' wedding. Late at night, someone told Camila that Clark was kissing another girl. She went to check and indeed caught the couple in each other's arms. She cried, ran away, and Ben, also a bit drunk, caught up with her and tried to console her. They went to his nearby home since his parents stayed at the wedding. Camila cried, the boy comforted her, and then they kissed. She did it out of revenge and Ben, he was happy in those moments with his beloved. Early in the morning, Camila woke up in bed next to Ben. She was horrified, she certainly didn't want anything like that, but then she calmed down a bit. All her clothes were on her, so nothing terrible happened. Quietly, so as not to wake anyone, she left the house and ran away. Clark came to reconcile with her a few days later. Of course, she forgave him, especially when she realized she was pregnant. After that, Ben left to study, and they never saw each other again. Camila sighed sharply, as if breaking free from the web of memories. Then she looked at the address of Ben Clinic, it was only three stops away. Let's go, son, Uncle Ben. I think he won't refuse such a pretty boy and will cure your tooth. Arriving at the place and leaving her son with their belongings in the lobby, Camila walked to Ben's office, knocked, and cautiously opened the door. He was sitting at the desk with his back to her, writing something, and there was no client in the chair. Camila wanted to call out to him, greet him as carefree as possible, but she couldn't. She stopped hesitantly in the doorway. Ben continued writing for a few more seconds before turning to the girl. In his eyes, a momentary reflection of surprise, embarrassment, and boundless joy appeared. Finally, Ben couldn't contain himself abruptly stood up from his chair, walked over to Camille and gently embraced her. In those few seconds, the girl barely had time to examine him, but it was enough to be amazed at how much Ben had changed. He had grown taller, slimmed down, become more masculine, and even attractive. How long has it been since I last saw you exclaimed the man, eagerly examining her face? You've become even more beautiful. How are you doing? Yes, well, no Camille couldn't lie to him. Everything is terrible. I left my husband, or rather, he was never really a husband to me. And now I don't know where to go. Plus, my son has a toothache. You have a son? A little one, I presume? Where is he here? Let me see what I can do. Within a few minutes, the aching tooth was in the boy's hand. Mickey was smiling, unaffected by pain. You have a good little one, Ben said sadly to Camille as the boy left the room to play with toys in the children's corner. I had cheeks like that in my childhood. You know he lowered his head so that the girl wouldn't notice he closed his eyes in embarrassment. Camille noticed and suddenly blurted out, so, he's your son, that's why his cheeks are the same. 
Remember that night after the wedding? Or were you so drunk that you didn't understand anything? Ben stared at Camille wide-eyed. He processed her words for a couple of minutes, then smiled broadly and happily. So, can we communicate? You don't mind me being around your son and you, of course, and let's move in with me. I have a two-room apartment. You'll stay in one room, and I'll be in the other. I promise not to bother you. He paused for a moment, then added quietly, but I promise to love. Camille blushed. Why did she blurt out such a thing? Why lie to such a such a good person? She joked, damn it. What would happen now? But living with Ben at least for a while was their salvation, and the girl decided not to back down from her words. Ben gave Camille the keys, told her the address, and asked her to feel at home. When he returned from work, a hot dinner was already waiting for him. Camille had managed to tidy up and prepare a delicious meal, as all the necessary ingredients were in the fridge. They all sat down to dinner together, and Camille told Ben about her unhappy life, concealing only that Clark was Mickey's biological father. Ben listened silently, then took her hand across the table, smiling. How fortunate that you didn't list Clark as Mickey's father. We'll fill in that category together. Because he's my son, right? Camille blushed and remained silent. Then they had tea with the cake Ben brought, and afterward he went to the hallway and brought a huge box with a tabletop football game. Mickey's mouth dropped open in delight, forgetting to thank Ben. He had never had such expensive toys before. They all went to sleep late, almost midnight, laughing, playing football, and indulging in cake. Camille lay in bed next to her son and almost cried. She replayed every minute of this kind, cheerful evening in her mind. She remembered how Ben looked at her. Camille hadn't seen such love in someone's eyes for a long time, possibly never, and how Mickey played with Ben. The little one didn't leave him, gazing at him with delight and admiration, something he had never done with Clark. He was afraid of his biological father not loving him. Camille wished she could live her life like this. Why didn't she see what a wonderful person Ben was back in their youth? Why did she only see his completeness and feel embarrassed about him in front of her friends? She fell for the glossy cover of Clark, beneath which hid a sleazy tabloid. But the past cannot be undone, and Camilla cannot lie for long. Living in falsehood is not her forte. All she needed was to earn a little money, find some accommodation, even if it's the tiniest room for rent. She would confess and leave immediately. But the search for housing dragged on a bit. Ben did not allow Camilla to return to her job. She worked in a cheap beer shop, the only place she could find without any education and with a small child. Clark got her the job his friend was the owner of that establishment. When Camila told Ben where she worked, he was horrified and promised to find her a more decent place. Meanwhile, he persuaded her to stay home and wait for him from work. Even Mickey wasn't sent to daycare yet. Camila realized that the housing search was being postponed, but deep down she was even relieved by this delay and gladly took on household chores. So three weeks flew by as if a minute. And suddenly Ben mother came to visit them. She entered the apartment, opening the door with her own key. She walked in and froze at the threshold when she saw Camila and Mickey. What are you doing here? She demanded, squinting in anger. How dare you come to my son's house? Have you forgotten how you betrayed him, mocked him with your vulgar friends? You knew he loved you more than life itself. You knew you were hurting him, but you didn't care you wanted a better life. You chased after Clark, that handsome monster, lusted after his parents' money, and now you've decided to lie down with my son? 
The fat and poor version of him wasn't good enough for you, but the fit one with a good job suddenly became appealing at this point. The woman figured it out. Maybe your pretty boy kicked you out along with the child Ben's stern voice came from the doorway the moment he returned. Mom, don't say that he added. Mom, I have a surprise for you. Mickey is my son, where did you get that? Son, the woman's eyes widened in indignation. She was in your bed only once, and she was fully dressed. Do you think I would allow her to sleep in your bed if there was anything going on? I know very well that you both fell asleep almost immediately. Camila stood there, listening to all of this, trying not to cry. What his mother was saying was all true. Camila didn't deserve it she was unworthy of such a husband and such happiness. Yes, Ben. There was nothing between us back then. Forgive me, the girl whispered softly, lowering her head. We'll leave now, I'll quickly pack. Don't worry, she hugged her son and hurriedly went with him into the room to pack their things. Wait, Ben followed Camilla, took her by the shoulders, turned her towards him, and looked straight into her eyes. You're not going anywhere. I can't lose you for the second time. After those happy days we spent together, I simply can't live without you. I love you, Camila, and I love Mickey. I remember that evening. Yes, nothing happened. You almost immediately fell asleep, but before that you managed to give me a kiss. And I didn't sleep until morning, watching you, memorizing your features. I knew you didn't love me, but I decided I would wait, even until death. I wouldn't find anyone like you, and I didn't want anyone else. You knew that Mickey wasn't your son, Camila gasped, and still accepted us. Silly girl Ben stroked her cheek, then lifted the boy into his arms and added, You are the dearest to me. By the way, wouldn't hurt to have a little daughter too, he looked at Mickey. What do you think, son? Do you mind having a little sister? Mickey didn't understand anything but still happily nodded. If you liked the story, please support me with a thumbs up button. All the best to you.